is in this video, uh, before I get to an actual full wash of this machine, you're probably wondering, what happened to the woo-woos? After talking with Eugene from Lorraine Furniture and Appliance, he said when they restored this machine, they used a different motor and a flat belt. And for maximum woo-woos, after talking to Eugene, he recommended that we change the flat belt that was installed back to the V-belt, as you see here, which is factory part, and as well as change the motor out. This is a new old stock motor for this machine, part number 285222. And this is actually dated from 1986. I got off eBay. This is a General Electric motor. The belt, what is new old stock. I made a copy of the man installation manual just in case I butchered the one that came with. The one that came with the motor was all crinkled up. I was able to at least get it scanned. But, as you can see by the diagram here, it is actual General Electric motor. That this guy is right here. So, we're going to begin doing the tedious task of changing the motor and belt on the 1978 Kenmore 70 series. Alright, we got it on the side. On a moving blanket. So this is what it looks like underneath. And that's the motor that's in there. The motor we're going to be putting in. And just as well, there's the belt. As you can see, it's just a plain old flat belt in here. So, let's begin. Okay, loosen the nuts holding the motor mounting bracket. And slide the motor over to the right, blah, blah, blah. Well, the motor's just going to come out, so let's do that now. Well, guys, we got the motor out. Got the mounting bracket stuff right here. Here's the new motor, but we ran into a problem. This is the motor that was in there. It has a Whirlpool part number. Problem is, the set screw is rounded out. And we can't get the pulley off. It's also not the pulley that was original to the washer either. It's original to this motor. So I think we're just going to look for another brand new pulley. Well, looks like we're going to have to get a new pulley to make it work with the motor here. So we're just going to continue on though with at least changing the belt. Get everything else squared away. So got that out. Remove the three support braces attached to the gear case and base plate. And that would be this guy, this guy, and that guy there. So, let's do it! Well, I, uh, <laughs> pretty much after I did that last step, I ended up going right through. And I got stuck for a little bit trying to figure out what to do, but... Got it done. I actually, uh, sprayed down the transmission of simple green and then wiping it down so it's mostly cleaned up the old belt right there new belt right there now I'm just going to take my time in reverse and I'll show you know once I get it back on so just give me a second new belt is on now begins the reversal reverse process of putting this back together this is going to be one of those cases where, see, I never worked on one of these before. It's, now that I've gone through it, it just seems, you know, now I know exactly what part is in the way of what. It's not that bad, it's just time consuming. If I knew, you know, like I said, I don't have any experience with it, so this is a learning experience for me. Now, I'm actually working on the reverse process. <laughs> Uh, putting it back together like I said um, part I was trying to figure out because the instruction sheet didn't tell me to do so that uh, clutch spring right here 
has to be disconnected. Okay, and then the clutch yoke, which is this plate here, separates from the clutch shaft, which is this, and that is oil on there. I'm gonna put another drop or two on and make sure it's still oiled so it slides up and down because that's separate from the transmission. But when it's all part, this should separate just enough to where the belt will slip out through there. That was the part I was trying hard to, to figure out what they were trying to show me. Because after he slipped the belt out around that clutch shaft, you know, it's around that, then you gotta slip it around the pump and it pops right out. So that makes perfect sense now. But this is also, I can't really show me working on it uh, while I'm doing this, but I can at least go through what I experienced here. Now to put it back together, the transmission bolts are going to be here and here you finger tighten according to the instructions. This one here has a spacer. Now let me back up. The reason why you loosen the transmission is to get that gap to slide the belt through. That's what that's all about. The one down below right here has a spacer, but what I'm doing now is I'm actually running all the hardware pieces and then I'm going to continue reassembly as well as these um, mounting braces for the transmission to the base plate and the motor mounts I'm going to run through the parts washer on a quick cycle just to get all any grease and crap off of it before I put it back together. So that's where I'm at. And just like I said, once now that I know what to do, it ain't that bad. It's just time consuming. But I was just trying to figure out what part and then trying to get the spin cam, uh, you know, the bar right here in place and then trying to push up on the wigwag trying to get to engage to make this happen fun but I just like I said I spray it now simple green including this splash guard for the motor and it cleaned up rather nicely and I got the self leveling feet to at least work let me see yeah, see, I just got to lubricate it. It's a little stiff. See, when I got it, it wouldn't level. And I was using those um, shims right there. And so I was able to, since I knew I was going to be taking it apart, figure out what it needed. So, I'm gaining some experience on how to work on these. And Harley got, managed to find a pulley for this. So that'll be in by Thursday, which is about five days from now. At least I'll get the motor in and everything. And uh, we'll see. Next step is we're going to stand this back upright. I have the three transmission mounting bolts um, just finger tight. The instructions say uh, this procedure will allow the superstructure to properly align itself with the center post bearing. The only um, transmission uh, bolt that's different is this one right here. It has a spacer in it. That's the one you actually take completely out of the unit. Whereas uh, these two here, merely uh, you just loosen. This says about seven turns to get it to slip. All right, we got the machine back upright. So the next step is I'm gonna tighten those bolts right here, all three of them, while it's sitting up. All right, the machine's back down on its side after I tighten the transmission bolts. So on to the next step. Well, the braces and the motor mounting brackets are just came out of the parts washer nice and clean so now we're going to start reinstalling some of those pieces well, I got it all back together minus the pulley which I can actually just slip on 
while it's mounted in place. There's enough room. So that's the proper motor that should be in here. I also spent a lot of time uh, re, um, cleaning and re-greasing and oiling all moving parts that are external to the transmission. I, right as I was finishing up, the ring terminal that was on the green ground wire for the motor broke off. <laughs> so I had to go take take it out, uh, strip it, put a new one, crimp it, put it on, and motor's wired in. And this one has a capacitor on it. This one has is made by General Electric, as I've mentioned. There's the specs. So, gotta wait till Thursday to get the pulley in. And the last step I had to do was blow off the in the box dust of the motor since it's been sitting for 30 some years. It was loose and it came all right off. It was good. All right. I hooked up power to it just to see what the motor would sound like. Um, one thing I tried at first, I turned it on. Not only was the motor on during that, um, it was trying to, because it was trying to engage the spin, um, the wigwag, one of the, the spin uh, cam solenoid was engaged and that was buzzing. But this is what the motor sounds like. Sounds perfectly healthy. With nothing hooked to it. So this is what it sounds like if your belt broke or something. In it. And press stop. Well, the part came in today, Wednesday. Feb Wednesday, April 4th. And uh, I got so excited it got in, I forgot to record what it looked like coming out of the box. It was in the box, never used. But there it is. Set screw is tight. Got the belt. Uh, tension the best I could it's as tight as it's gonna get and it is about a half inch deflection like the book says so we're good there so let's stand it up okay we got a small load of whites in there so I'm gonna put this on low it's on hot warm that mind you this isn't a full wash video this is just to well you'll see what happens so now we turn the water level up to max so we get less splish splash and more woo woo. Yes! Hear it? It's okay, go ahead and tell everybody who's a genius. Him. Finally, after all these years, I get my woo woos. That sounds just like a YouTube video. Just like in real life. Well, even though that's an excessive amount of water, it's still cool. Damn, that is, even though it doesn't have the quiet pack or anything, that is a 
quiet room. Or, that is a quiet washer. that time. Everything's breaking and that sounded sweet. All right, so that concludes bringing back the woo-woos. So the next video you'll see in the next few days will involve a full proper wash cycle, possibly multiple wash cycles. So thanks for watching and hit like and subscribe.